When your time on this earth is done, who will remember you? What will people remember about you? Or better yet, what will you be remembered for? What kind of legacy will you leave? You are leaving a legacy whether you like it or not. And everyone is going to leave a legacy. The question is, are you going to be intentional about the legacy you are leaving? Hi, my name is Emil Joseph. I am your host and this is my podcast, Legacy. I created this podcast as a way to share my life and experiences with my future kids. But for those of you that are just here to listen to me talk about my legacy, welcome. Maybe just by listening, it can help you start to build yours. And just remember, everyone has a story. And our stories all have something in common. It's that we all start from nothing. <sighs> oh man, what's up guys? It's been hot in the Bay. It's abnormally hot. It's been hot like all week and man, my body's not used to this. But anyways, um, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about fitting in. Fitting in the Bay or fitting in in just general. So when I grew up, when I moved from the Philippines to the United States, I had to really obviously adjust to the culture and moving to the Bay was even a more like it was more of a stress thing because things were done different here. So um, and the only thing I knew about like American culture was watching TV right in the Philippines. So uh so, you know, my mom enrolled me in school. We didn't live in San Jose yet. We start. I started living out in Sunnyvale. And Sunnyvale, man, let me tell you, like, San Jose back then was kind of diverse. There was a lot of Mexicans, Filipinos, and, and a lot of other races. But in, in Sunnyvale and Cupertino area, man, it was all white. It was all white. Like, I think in my school, like I said before, there was only, like, two Asian or non-white people in my school like there was a you know it was a spanish girl and then i think there was like a chinese boy and then, then there was me so um but now what's cool is sunny bell cupertino is all diverse a lot of chinese indian all kinds which is cool back then it wasn't cool to be i mean my parents couldn't afford like really fancy clothes so um back then it was really all about brands. Now you could wear like, you know, you can stop at Target as long as you pair it with like some cool style. It's fine. But let me tell you, when I was growing up, if you didn't have something, you were made fun of. So at least my parents were able to buy me like Vans. I was like a skater back then. That's what I liked. My neighborhood was all white and my, except for my neighbor. My neighbor was, um, he was Korean and white. So that was kind of cool, and he helped me through, like, transition. And my parents used to tell me, like, to your dad, you speak Tagalog, Filipino. And then to me, my mom, I would just speak English so I could practice, right? And it was hard because my mom would just say, hey, don't, you have to use English. So my English was really broken, and I was really shy to begin with anyway at school. So it was, it was cool because... They aren't as hardcore in school now. Like, you could be quiet and still do well, right? Back now, you have to participate. It's very, you got to be involved. Like, back then, it wasn't like that. So, fitting it was really hard because I was also short. My parents gave me the super Asian bowl cut. My dad actually put the bowl on my head and cut it. I liked it, but it was it's because my dad didn't want to pay for a haircut. Because he said that, why should I pay for a haircut when in two weeks it's going to grow out? It makes no sense. And I was like, eh, you know, whatever. But then I kind of styled it. So it's like um, kind of like skater, skater style or whatever. So it was cool. Um, and what was cool is my parents really wanted me to fit in. So I did Boy Scouts. I did baseball. I played the piano. I played... Um, violin I did all that stuff I was a altar boy at church I'm a catholic so I uh I did altar boy I went to CCD that's like Sunday catholic school I don't know if they still have that but that was big 
And then um, I did all that stuff to fit in. You know, like I swear, like my life when I was a kid was nothing but stuff I need to do, like homework. Then I had to do my violin lesson, my my uh, my um, uh, my piano lesson. And then I had to get ready for Boy Scout meetings. And um, and on the weekends, I had baseball. Like, I don't think I was even thinking as a kid, like I was, I was a kid, but man, I was like on a schedule. <laughs> My mom, I swear, always had me doing stuff, you know, because she really wanted me to do well in the United States. She wanted me to do fit in. So she wanted me to have all these, you know, activities and all these, learn these things. So it will help me throughout my life. I didn't understand that when I was smaller. I just like, man, I just want to stay home and watch, you know, uh, watch cartoons and stuff. And, uh, you know, skate with my friends, go to the park and stuff like that. The cool thing about my parents was that, um, they understood that I had to have friends, you know? So what the, I had a curfew, right? My curfew was like, it was cool because my curfew is like when the lights, when the lights in the street turn on, I have to be home, which means that's like sunset. So every day, every day I could do that every day. Um, I would stay out till, you know, at my friend's house or whatever. And that was cool. It was, it was chill. Like after school, I think I would run home just to watch an anime that was like at three thirty, And that was like for 30 minutes, right? 30 minute anime. And then I would go out with my friends. And then when I get home, I would, uh, you know, eat my dinner and then I do my homework and stuff like that. So that was cool. That was me doing stuff like every other kid. I would, you know, go over to my friend's house, play like video games and stuff like that. And um, also food, you know, like nowadays it's cool to be your culture, right? It's cool to kind of, you know, have your Filipino food at school and stuff like back then, man, I brought spam sandwich and they were like, what is that? I brought like puto. It's like this like. I don't know, this muffin and maruya, which is like a banana, like, I don't know, banana, like bread or something like that. It was so good. But people would laugh at me, like seriously laugh at me because like, what is that? You know, because everyone was obviously like, like white. So, you know, I begged my mom, I want to get some Wonder Bread. My mom's like, no, that's expensive. So my mom would always get me like, you know, like pan de leche, which is like milk bread. It was good, dude. Trust me. Pandalecha is good. It's just that with around my friends, it wasn't cool. The good thing is my parents got me like, you know, fruit roll-ups, Doritos, stuff like that. So that helped. You know? And um, I did Boy Scouts. I did, uh, I was a Boy Scout. I'm actually an Eagle Scout. So I went all the way. Um, And you know what? I, I did this because I was trying to fit in with the, with the kids around me because everyone was in like Boy Scouts and I was, a, I played baseball. I did all that stuff, you know, not knowing that all that stuff was teaching me things, you know, um, and thinking back, I'm glad I did it. It taught me things that I probably would have never learned. Also playing with my friends at the park. I used to get into fights. We used to have arguments, you know, like all, all kinds of stuff. You, you learn that stuff. And it's crazy because I was just trying to fit in, right? Um, the unfortunately, the unfortunate thing is that I was trying to really fit in the American culture. That I was losing my own culture. I was sure I still went to church. I did all that stuff, but you know, like I stopped speaking Tagalog as much, so I started to lose my my tongue like I could still speak but it sounded weird you know it still sounds weird now but um I started to lose stuff because I thought that it was more important that I do well in American society so I can have a job and I can be successful and my parents agreed with me they they never pushed you know I never really hung out with my cousins or my other family I never really did that. I just hung out with my school friends, my Boy Scout friends. I was, I, on weekends, we would do like, um, you know, we do stuff for a community, paper drive, you know, and I was at church. I mean, 
I was doing so much to fit in, right? Like, and fitting in is not bad. I just felt like looking back, I was, I was, I was struggling so hard just to fit in, right? Just so that I would be accepted. That way I can go to college and do all this stuff. And, um, my parents supported me, right? Like, and I'm okay with that. You know, we I did a lot of baseball stuff. Um, I actually got into the Little League World Series. I mean, Little League, like, Little League, like, Tournament of Champions where, like, we pay, played the best in California. So I did all that stuff. But what's funny is that I was still kind of empty. You know, like, I still felt like, Like, I was just doing this stuff, even with my friends. Like, we were just friends because of, you know, because of baseball, because of Boy Scouts. So fitting in was, you know, it's something I felt like I needed to do. Uh, uh, looking back now, like my real friends now, it's way different. You know, like, I think that back then, I was so worried about fitting in that I didn't, even know who I was. I think I, before when I was in the Philippines, I knew who I was. But then when I came here, I felt like I was chasing this dream, this thing to be of, you know, Filipino American or whatever. I learned like martial arts, you know, like I learned all this, all this stuff just to fit in, but it wasn't me. The only thing that was really me was I think when I was by myself, when I was, you know, reading books that my mom made me do she was telling me all these stories and the dreams that I've had that I wanted to be I wanted to be like this superhero or I wanted I wanted like a crazy romantic life you know when you watch the movies or a crazy adventure like the Goonies like I I wanted all that you know and and I felt like I was just doing the other stuff just so that um I would be accepted you know I did all that stuff because if I didn't, then I'd be lonely and no one wanted to be my friend. And I had to have that, right? I felt like you need to have that or you're not going to be happy. And that's crazy now because after being in the Navy, being alone, like, you know, in the Navy, you're alone. I mean, you have your buddies in, you know, in your unit and stuff like that, but you're still alone. And, uh, and I learned that I like myself. I, I, I learned more about my stuff be, being alone than I was trying to be, trying to fit in. What sucks is that I lost all that time as a kid that I could have really explored who I was or who I wanted to be, but I didn't because I was too busy trying to fit in. And it sucks because I was like, you got to play the game. If you want to get up in life, you got to do this. And it's not true. You don't. You don't have to do that. I learned that in the Navy. I was... A lot of people in my unit, they were mean. They were racist. They were horrible. I was a medic in the Navy. So I, you know, there's people I worked with. I hated them, you know, like, but that's my job. And I, I, I'm that person that I'm going to help, right? Like, even though you were a dick to me or you were mean to me or you made me, you lied on me and then I, I got punished for it. I would never seek revenge because I feel like it's useless. It's going to be a a circle of this, I'm going to get you back, you're going to get me back. And I just didn't like that. And I felt like even though I had good friends in the Navy, I was still by myself still a lot of the time. And I think I was okay. And I think I truly understand what it was to fit in. Like I was fitting in but I was also myself and I was very very happy I'm still happy now but I compared to when I was trying to fit in it was way different and and I think that's what we do a lot we always try to fit in whether it's at at work at school with your friends your group of friends and then you have the separate you you know that um that is different and I feel that we marginalize our friend. Now, there, now, this is different. Like, I have camping friends that I just go camping with them, right? And I have friends that I used to ride motorcycles with or car friends or anime friends or even gamer friends where, like, I would go online and we'd play. And 
that's not me trying to be a different person. I'm just, I have a different, I have a lot of likes. I have a lot of things that I like to do. So I have different friends that I do that with. And it's weird because they don't mix. Sometimes they do. I mean, on my birthday, I had one party where all of them came together. And it was weird because everyone's like, you're friends with all these people. They're all like, uh, yeah, that's like different facets of who I am. You know, I have even people that are in politics. I have people that are in finance. You know, I have friends that uh, went to MIT and now they're like, you know, hackers or whatever, computer. Brand. But I have all that. And I think that I made those friends because I was OK with myself. I didn't have to be part of one group. I got to do what everyone else is doing. But I can still appreciate other friends in other groups, even though we may not have things in common, but they're a good person. And I like to hear about stuff in their life. It's interesting to me, and it makes me more aware of the world around me. And I think that's cool. And I think that before I used to just want to be fit in, like, oh, you like cars? Okay, let's do cars. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm going to get a car. We're going to roll out, you know, and stuff like that. But I I think that growing up in the Navy and realizing that before when I was growing up, I was just trying to fit in. I'm much happier now. And I hope, hope you guys understand that Oprah realized that before it's too late because I'm so happy now. I'm so happy when I was in the Navy, even though I was alone. And... And fitting in is not always what it's cracked up to be, you know? And uh, I think the pressure of fitting in is is always hard. And then you, you think that when you don't have friends, then you're not cool or you're not successful. Or when you have a birthday and no one shows up or you don't have these crazy birthdays at the clubs and people are like, yeah, Mio's birthday was sick. You know, like, and that makes you not you know, popular or not worth anything. It's funny because I don't really like my birthday. I don't really like telling people my birthday. I don't really care about that, you know? Like, yeah, I care it's my birthday, but I, I'm just not with that one person where like, oh, it's my birthday, we gotta we gotta party it up, let's get lit, you know? And um, I think that's a big thing of part uh, of trying to fit in. I think everyone wants to have whatever the other person has, right? Oh, you had a birthday, but I gotta have a good birthday party. You know, we're always, always like trying to one up people, right? Like, and I think that when you don't do what other people do, you feel like okay, especially with social media now, like everyone's doing the trends and stuff like that. I think, you know, it's okay to fit in if that's what you want, but if it doesn't really make you happy, why are you doing it? Why are you wasting your time? And I think that growing up in the Bay, if I just stopped worrying about fitting in and just really made friends with friends, and I did, but I didn't truly, you know, like, I feel like I I would have been a way, I would have been who I am now way back then. And man, let me tell you, I always wanted to be accepted by my family and friends, and I always wondered why they didn't accept me. They didn't like me. I always pandered and always craved their their acceptance my friends acceptance like i want to be invited to the party you know i want always wanted to be part of the group yeah you know i was probably the token asian kid you know the one that thought i was chinese <laughs> they always think that like you know back in the day they're like what's filipino is that like chinese i'm like no it's not like chinese <laughs> you know and people like but you guys eat rice and Chinese eat rice. I'm like, yeah, but so do like Latin countries too. A lot of Eastern European countries eat, uh, you know, rice too. Doesn't make them like Chinese. I don't think so. You know, like, so I think that fitting in is hard. I think trying to fit in, sometimes you're going to lose yourself. And I wish that Maybe when I was younger, I stopped worrying about fitting in and worried about figuring out who I was and who I wanted to be. I think you should too. I know it's a short one today, but I hope you have a happy Sunday. And 
I'll see you next time. Peace.